for a lot of... The Norwegian Gamer. Hi guys, Hyperlative here, the Norwegian Gamer. And this is some attacking rush on Valparaiso. In this video, I wanted to cover a topic that Tryhard Ninja brought up in a recent commentary of his. He um, hadn't put up any commentaries in about two weeks, and it was partly because of the PSM being down, and partly because his hard drive, where he had all the gameplay stored up, uh, saved up, crashed at the same time. So he didn't have anything to put up, and he couldn't make any more gameplays because of PSN being down. And a thing that he mentioned was that when he tried to log on to PSN for the first time after the, reco the, the recovery, he was asked to change his password and verify it by email. And he, you know, all things considered, it's a really great thing because there is a chance that some hacker might have your password and it's a you know good conduct to kind of change it now that we have have the ability and he mentioned that you shouldn't have the same password for you both your PSN account and your email and especially because you sign in with your email on your PSN account so I'm pretty sure that the hackers can deduct you know what kind of email service you're using if you're using Gmail I mean your email uh, ends with gmail.com so I think they can you know deduce that they that you're using gmail and if you're using the same password they will suddenly have the access to your personal emails what's even worse is that you're probably using that same email to log on to Facebook and if you're even more unfortunate you may be using that same password on Facebook too so suddenly they have access to your Facebook account and I don't know but you might have stuff there that you really don't want them to know so it's always a good thing to have different passwords for different web services or websites that you use and I do realize that keeping track of a lot of different passwords is really complicated but the thing is, if someone learns your password to one service, you don't want them to have access to all your different uh, personas or accounts throughout the web. One example is there was this French guy who actually managed to hack Twitter uh, a year or a year and a half, a year and a half back. And he didn't do it through, you know, kind of hacking through security and finding a vulnerability in their security. What he did was actually doing it through social engineering. He he researched one of the employees at Twitter. Her he re researched her background and found out a lot of stuff about her just by googling her and seeing what she'd be tweeting and you know stuff like that. What he did then was go to her uh, go to Gmail and request a new password because he said he'd forgotten it but he was requesting a new password for this Twitter employees account now because of the research he knew the answer to her secret question and that way he got access to her email and the worst part is he actually managed to surveillance her email for a few weeks without her knowing and he then got access to Twitter because she used the same password for both her email account and for the back end of Twitter. And through her account, he managed to get access to a lot of different accounts on, on the back end of Twitter and that way managed to get access to a lot of really sensitive data that Twitter didn't really want the public to know and that's the most common way that you're gonna lose your password today too not through hacking but through social engineering where people might outsmart you in a conversation and you end up giving up their your password without perhaps even without you knowing you do it kind of inadvertently so 
what I recommend is actually to use different passwords for different websites. And as I said, I know it's a hassle, but I've got a solution, actually two solutions, for how you could manage it. So, the first one is a manual one. And it's quite easy. You first make a passphrase. For example, this is my password. Then you take the first letters of each of those words, T-I-M-P, and use that, that as your passphrase. Then you take the initials of the web service or website that you're going to use the password for and put those initials either at the end of the passphrase or at the start or in the middle. I don't know. Put it, put it wherever you want. But the fact is that if the initials for Facebook was FB, your pass password for Facebook would be T-I-M-P-F-B or F-B-T-I-M-P. And that way you could have a different password for each web service without having it, but in a system so that you can remember them. And of course you can mix it up, you know, you can take the last letters in the, of the words in your passphrase or, you know, just mix it up, but make a system that you remember and you know how to use. And you should also put some capital letters and some numbers in the passphrase. Perhaps switch out some letters from for numbers or something, and that will make your password more secure. Now, the other solution that I would recommend is using a third-party service f uh, for remembering passwords. So what I use and I've been using for quite some time is LastPass. And it's a free service if you're just going to use it on the web and in your browser. If you want access to your passwords through the iPhone or Android app, you'll have to pay $1 a month. But still, it's pretty darn cheap. And it's free if you don't want to have the passwords on the go. Of course, you could log in through the website in the mobile browser, if nothing else. But the fact is that they don't ca they can't see your passwords. They don't store your passwords per se. What they store is a they're, they're just digits and letters and signs. And what you need to do to actually get your passwords is that the service downloads those letters, digits and signs down to your computer, uses what they call a master password which only you know and uses that as a key and that master password tells LastPass locally on your computer how to decipher the letters, digits, and signs into your passwords. So LastPass don't know your passwords. Hackers that get into LastPass don't know your passwords. The only one who knows your passwords are you. And you don't have to remember them because with the plugins or extensions in the browsers, they can LastPass can fill out you know the login forms for you it can remember it can even log you in automatically when you get to those login forms so you don't have to remember the password for Facebook anymore LastPass does and that way no one can get your password for Facebook because in in reality you don't know so I'll put a link to LastPass in the description check it out it's really awesome this is the end of the video. <laughs> end of the video. I hope to see you next time. Snuckus.